Welcome to the course on design of power electronic converters. We were in the module of uh, thermal design and uh, till now uh, we have uh, seen how to estimate the power losses, uh, then we also saw different types of heat sinks, then we further saw uh, simple models of uh, uh, thermal design. We saw steady state response, transient response and uh, we also saw how devices can be modeled in a very simple by using simple networks. Now let us look into how to choose the heat sink for thermal design means actually how to do the thermal design. So thermal design means basically you have to cool down the device and you have to choose the heat sinks and you have to choose the cooling method means you want to to forced air cooling or liquid cooling or natural uh, cooling, what type of cooling you want to and what could be a good heat sink which you can use uh, which will be uh, able to cool down the devices and the entire power electronic converter and will be able to maintain the temperatures below the maximum limits. So uh, now uh, we have to then uh, be familiar with the, the terms which are important for uh, heat sink selection. Now uh, some of the terms uh, uh, we have already discussed like your thermal Im resistances, impedances, the time constants, uh, so those terms are important. Apart from that uh, uh, you should be knowing the common terms related to uh, the fan because if you are using forced air cooling then uh, what is the way fan is uh, specified for thermal design uh, you should know about it. Now there are two terms uh, associated there one is your LFM that is your linear feet per minute. And second is your CFM which is cubic feet per minute. Now this uh, linear feet per minute is uh, basically when uh, in terms of uh, your uh, heat sink you want to know how much is the volume of the air which is flowing through a, a certain um, point or a certain part. Uh, but usually uh, your fan manufacturers uh, they provide your uh, air velocity information in terms of cubic feet per minute. It is a volumetric air flow uh, uh, term your cubic feet per minute. So uh, uh, we can relate these two, they can be uh, converted. So your uh, linear feet per minute LFM, this is uh, equal to CFM by your cross sectional area of the fan and it has to be in feet square. So that means uh, let us say the fan uh, is uh, this fan is let us say your uh, 6 inch into 6 inch fan it is the cross sectional area of it is. So uh, then uh, that uh, could be written as uh, equal to 0 0.25 feet square And uh, then let us say if the fan is uh, the manufacturer provides you the information that it is an 80 CFM fan. So you can substitute here as uh, 80 by your 0.25. So that will give you 320. So that means uh, 320 uh, in LFM is equal to your 80 CFM. Now, uh, we saw that that uh, there are different types of foster network core network and uh, then transient and then um, uh, you can also use the steady state very simple uh, uh, equivalent circuit also for uh, uh, choosing your heat sink. 
Now, most of the time uh, what people do is uh, they go by the simplest one that means uh, the simple electrical equivalent circuit that we have discussed before. That means you calculate or you estimate the total power dissipation PD and you find out the different thermal resistances that are provided and you find out what is the maximum junction temperature. So, you look for you estimate the PD the total power dissipation then uh, you go to the data sheet of the device that you are using and uh, from there you look for the information of uh, R theta junction to case. So, R theta junction to case uh, you look for that information. Then uh, you will also find out the typical value of uh, uh, case to sink. This is also mostly given in the uh, data sheet of uh, devices or depending on your thermal pad that you may be using or whatever uh, thermal paste you may be applying to the power semiconductor modules uh, base. Uh, so, um, or from their data sheets also you can find out uh, uh, what is the typical value of case to sink thermal resistance. So, you find out these and uh, then you also find out the maximum junction temperature Tj, this maximum Tj what is allowed. And uh, then based on your application you find out what is the ambient temperature. It may not be a fixed ambient temperature, maybe a range of ambient temperature. So, you can find out the most likely ambient temperature. It is a room temperature or is it higher than that? It is a 50 degree C, 60 degree C, or it is a round room temperature 20, 25 degree C. What is the ambient temperature for your application? So, these things uh, once you have found out, then what you do is you, uh, you find out your R theta sink to ambient. So, this is the one that you find out. So, we write using simple equations that is your P d is equal to P d into R theta is equal to your uh, difference between your junction temperature and ambient temperature. So, based on that you can find out this R theta sink to ambient which will be equal to T j minus T a by P d minus of R theta junction to case plus R theta case to sink. Using this you can find out sink to ambient thermal resistance. And uh, then what you do is uh, you go to the uh, data sheets of different manufacturers of uh, heat sinks and uh, you try to find out a heat sink which has got a thermal resistance similar to this. Now, this equation over here this is for natural cooling. Natural cooling means you are just using the heat sink you are not providing any uh, thing additional like you are not giving any. Uh, fan there you are not doing forced air cooling. Now, here we are not discussing liquid cooling uh, we are skipping it uh, we are taking only the simple things. So, it is a natural cooling uh, this equation is valid for natural cooling. So, uh, what you do is you go into the data sheets of uh, heat sinks and uh, there you see for natural cooling what is the thermal resistance that is provided. And uh, there you have to find out a heat sink uh, which is having a thermal resistance which is close to this value of R theta SA that you have obtained here. And uh, if you are using forced air cooling then uh, uh, you have uh, to use uh, these uh, terms also and you have to also look into what is further uh, information related to your uh, decrease in the thermal resistance with the value of your um, uh, this uh, increase in air velocity that is your LFM value uh, versus your thermal resistance graph which will also be provided into the data sheets of heat sinks. 
So, what kind of graphs uh, or curves that are given by uh, heat sink manufacturers? So, they look uh, similar to this. So, two types of graphs are given on the same uh, graph and it is usually to save space they give both the graphs on the um, on the same uh, inside uh, one graph there actually they give two graphs. So, uh, the first one here you can see that this is power dissipation the P d value versus the rise in temperature the rise uh, temps, uh, above ambient. So, rise in temperature of the heat sink based on the power dissipation. So, these are the graphs uh, that you can see here that are given. So, this is how the if this is 50 uh, um, uh, watt loss that is happening you can see that the rise in temperature will be 40 degree C. And this is actually over here given uh, the information the graphs for two of the heat sinks together. So, that is why you see two graphs here one is having some number 431 and another is 433. So, uh, uh, here if we follow this 433 graph then you can see if it is 100 degree 100 watt uh, power dissipation that is happening. So, the uh, temperature rise uh, will be something in between 1780 close to 75 is the heat dissipate uh, is the um, temperature rise that is going to take place. Now, what we observe there is another graph that is uh, air velocity versus your thermal resistance. So, uh, with respect to your uh, uh, air velocity in uh, LFM that is feet per minute if, uh, these graphs are given. So, if it is 100 is the uh, uh, air velocity. So, there you can see that the thermal resistance for uh, this 433 uh, heat sink is this much uh, that is around 0 0.4 uh, degree C per watt. And if the air velocity becomes uh, your 400 you can see that the thermal resistance reduces to 0 0.2 degree C per watt. we can mark from here and uh, here also we can mark and uh, you can observe this. So, like that uh, you can see for uh, other uh, points also. So, as uh, we increase the air velocity that means uh, forced air cooling is increased the thermal resistance is going to go down. This graph that is provided that is your rise in temperature uh, uh, versus your power dissipation that is for natural cooling that means when no forced air cooling is provided no fan is attached that time how the temperatures are going to rise based on how much power dissipation is happening that is what is provided here. So, what is the thermal resistance uh, for natural cooling that you can obtain using this graph. So, how do you do that? So, that is basically you have this uh, rise in temperature and you also have the power dissipation you simply divide. So, let us say this is your 40 is the rise in temperature here corresponding to 50 watt. So, 40 by 50 so that is 4 by 5 is the thermal resistance at uh, this point. Okay. This is uh, uh, not exactly a straight line. So, that means the thermal resistance is also not uh, going to be completely a uh, constant value. It depends on how much power dissipation is happening at what point we are operating. Okay. And uh, uh, you can obtain the thermal resistance from there for natural cooling and uh, uh, then uh, if you see for uh, your forced air cooling how much the thermal resistance is coming uh, is reducing then you uh, the fr using this thermal resistance multiplying with the power dissipation that is happening in your application you can obtain how much will be the rise in temperature for that particular heat sink. So, uh, let us now look into data sheet of a heat sink. This is data sheet of a heat sink by the manufacturer Evit 
And here uh, this is actually not a, um, a data sheet of only one um, heat sink, but uh, a series of heat sinks. You can see that these are those the series uh, that is uh, written here. Now, what is the meaning of the series? It is like the same geometry, uh, but uh, the dimensions may be somewhat different that is where you get a series. Okay. So, what is the geometry of the heat sink? You can see here that uh, it is uh, shown over here. So, you have got the screws on the side means some holes and uh, then uh, uh, you can put screws here and then uh, fix it wherever you want to fix the heat sink. And uh, then the, this is a very simple heat sink. This is uh, a plate uh, uh, that you can see below. And uh, then further you can see that uh, these are different fins that are, are uh, put. Some of the fins uh, their lengths are uh, little smaller where the screw is placed, other fins are little longer. And uh, what is the material that is used? Uh, you can see here the material written is, is copper. And further other uh, information details of the heat sink are also provided here. And uh, uh, it is also written what is the mountain direction of the heat sink that is horizontal means uh, you have to put uh, the heat sink on this uh, on this whatever module you have that you have to put it on the on the plate and not on the fins. Then uh, what uh, we further see here this is you can see here for uh, this one part number uh, and for this entire series the dimensions are given. And you can see that this dimension is, uh, uh, is same for many of them, for these two they are different. And what is this T dimension? You can see that this T is, a, a, is this thickness that is provided is this uh, T. And so they all have that same thickness uh, plate we can uh, see observe here, only two of them have different. Then uh, H, H is what? H is the height of the heat sink. You can see here the height of the heat sink that is provide height of the heat sink or you can say the height of the fins uh, that is also given but that is uh, varying. And uh, then the width, uh, so that is the width of the heat sink that uh, is also provided here. Then the length of the heat sink that is also given. So, the length is also varying for different of them. And uh, but then uh, your uh, fin dimensions that means the thickness of the fin that is also given over here. Okay. So, these are the different dimensions of the heat sinks that are provided uh, for you. Now, what we observe is that further what is given over here is the graph uh, that we just saw that means your rise in temperature versus your heat dissipation or power dissipation and uh, this one that is your air velocity LFM versus your thermal resistance in degree Celsius per watt that is provided. And uh, this is provided for your uh, this part number 342940 and similar graphs are provided for uh, all the other uh, rest of the part numbers. Okay, so, you can see here uh, uh, this is the second graph that is provided for uh, this part number and uh, then there is um, another one which is provided here for this part number 342942 uh, similar graphs are provided. And uh, on this side uh, what you observe uh, here are these this mounting details uh, that also is uh, provided. Now, uh, this uh, is actually uh, associated with when you actually mount uh, the heat sink and uh, you mount the device also, uh, its orientation, how much torque you should be providing while uh, fixing the screws. So, those information are also given in the data sheets. Now, let us take a simple example of uh, how we, you can use these data sheets for uh, heat sink design or thermal design. Let us say you chose uh, some power semiconductor device for your power electronic converter where the maximum Tj is given as 150 degree C. So, this is the max that is allowed. 
and for your particular application let us say your ambient temperature was given as equal to 50 degrees C. Further you saw in the data sheet that uh, uh, your thermal resistance from junction to case is given as 3 degree Celsius per watt and uh, typical thermal resistance from case to sink was given as equal to 0.5 degree Celsius per watt. And let us say that the power dissipation that was uh, happening in your uh, device was equal to 5 watt. So, now your R theta uh, sink to ambient will be equal to 150 minus 50 by 5 that is the power dissipated minus the sum of uh, your r theta j c and r theta sink to ambient. So, that is uh, 3 plus 0.5. So, this gives you 16.5 degree Celsius per watt. So, now that means you have to choose a heat sink uh, whose uh, thermal resistance is close to this okay, or somewhat uh, below this is what you have to choose the heat sink. So, now let us uh, go back to the data sheets. Now, if we look into this uh, data sheet for this part number 342940, uh, for uh, 5 watt power dissipation you can see here the temperature rise is about 75 degree C. So, 75 uh, by 5 uh, your thermal resistance uh, R theta sink to ambient will be uh, equal to 75 degree C by 5 watt. So, that is your 15 watt, 15 degree C per watt will be the R theta sink to ambient. And uh, what uh, we needed was something close to 16.5 or somewhat below that. So, uh, what we observe here is that, that this uh, heat sink uh, we can choose, we can use it. But uh, what we see here is that for 5 watt uh, the rise in temperature is uh, 75 uh, degree C okay, which is uh, which is a very uh, huge temperature change that you can observe. Now what happens if you are going to use uh, the forced air cooling that means you use a fan there. So now let us say you decided to go for a fan where your uh, air velocity that means your LFM is 200, 200 is uh, the LFM, uh, uh, you choose the fan, the CFM of the fan you correspondingly you can find out by converting um, and uh, the cross sectional area of the fan. So, LFM of the fan turns out to be 200. So, then uh, you can observe here that uh, for uh, 200 uh, this uh, thermal resistance that uh, you find out let us say this is uh, almost equal to 2.6 over here the thermal resistance is between 2.5 and 2.8 we can approximately say that the thermal resistance turns out to be 2.6. So, in that case so, if you have the fan whose LFM equal to 200 and we saw that uh, your R theta sink to ambient for uh, that particular heat sink was uh, equal to 2.6 degree Celsius per watt. So, then the change in temperature delta T will be given as equal to 5 into 2.6. So, that is equal to 13 degree Celsius. So, that much is the difference when uh, you go for forced air cooling. Okay. So, uh, now uh, using the same heat sink then more power dissipation can also be allowed based on what is the maximum uh, temperature difference between T j and T a that is allowed. 
Okay, so this is how you can use the information that is given in the data sheets of heat sinks and choose the heat sink that will be suitable for your purpose. So, the key points of uh, this lecture are most of the time your steady state equations are used for uh, choosing the heat sink, the simple equations. Um, and uh, there are graphs given uh, by manufacturers of heat sink and you can use those graphs to find out the thermal resistance of the heat sinks versus uh, uh, for your different different power dissipation and uh, your temperature rise using that information and where and your uh, if the heat sink is meant for forced air cooling uh, can be used with forced air cooling. So, that also how much is the reduction in the thermal resistance as air velocity is increased those graphs are also provided by the manufacturer. So, using that you can then choose uh, the thermal design means uh, how much uh, is the cooling that means forced air cooling if you need it, how uh, much of air velocity is required or uh, what should be the thermal resistance of the heat sink that is needed. So, these kind of calculations you can perform and select your thermal design. Thank you.